Pat Love <clears throat> with Pat's Two Cents. I have a bone to pick with the body of Christ. And I love the body of Christ with all my heart. But I have a bone to pick with you. You guys, you know, none of us, I don't care how well versed and how deeply you have studied, none of us, N-O-N-E, has the last word on the word. So stop prancing around and strutting around as if you're the only ones that are going to make it to heaven. As if, if people don't believe what you believe, they're going straight to hell with all their prayers and all their dedication to the Lord. Or none of that counts because they don't believe what you believe. You studied the Bible. Well, guess what, you guys? Even the, or the Old Testament acknowledges that some will be called by the name of Abraham, some by Moses, some by this one or that one, by the Lord, by whatever. The Bible already predicted denominationalism. It doesn't mean it okays it. It just predicted it because that's the nature of the beast of humanity. It doesn't mean you're more right than I am. It doesn't mean I'm more right than you are. Some of you might be surprised to know that some of God's greatest soldiers are in the Catholic Church. Oof. Did I just say a cuss word? Some of God's greatest warriors are in the Baptist Church. Oh. Think about that. Some are charismatic or Pentecostal. Those tongue-talking people. Oh, no, I don't think so. And don't mention those boring Methodists and Lutherans. Oh, no way, Jose. Well, guess what? You are going to be surprised when you go to heaven. Because I'm going to tell you this, and this is going to rock some of you, and it's going to it's gonna muster up your feathers, and it's going to make you upset. But guess what? I knew two women, two women who loved God with all their hearts, who had literally given their hearts to the Lord. One was so filled with the Holy Spirit that our souls would just soar together when I would be doing her hair at the hair salon. One was named Pat, and the other one was named Anne. One was an American, and the other one was an African. And let me tell you this, you guys. They were both, oh, this, this is going to mess with your heads. Both of them, both of them were Jehovah's Witnesses. But remember this. Even in some of those churches that God was not at all pleased with, when he spoke in the book of Revelation, he said, but I know those that are mine that are even among you. It's a heart condition. Quit being so quick to pull the trash can out. You can't throw people in the trash because you're not in total agreement with them, because the movement they're in is in dire error, that doesn't negate the ones that really know God. Because guess what? As they know God, sometimes God allows those to stay amongst erroneous doctrinal denominations in order to usher in his presence. God loves them all. He loves all of us. You, me, the Jehovah's Witness, the Catholics, the Mormons. Come on now. Just because they're not in what we think is the right doctrine, what we have understood from the word of God is the right doctrine, does not mean that there are not people in those denominations, in those movements, that are filled with the Holy Spirit, that are anointed by God, 
that God smiles on because of their relationship with him, the love in their hearts, and the way they conduct their lives in true holiness and worship. You nor I have the last word on the word. So shut up, quit debating, let God handle who belongs to him. He knows how to take care of what belongs to him, trust me. In some of what you believe, there is error. In some of what I believe, there is error. That's why the Bible says, we know in part. As long as your behind is on the face of this earth and gravity can knock you down on your behind, you know in part. None of us will know it all until we are changed. And when we're changed into his image, we will know as we are known. That's Bible. So get off your judgment seats of intolerance. Get off your finger pointing chairs and start loving the body. Yes, there are going to be many cults out there that are wrong, but you'll be surprised. There will be some folks in those cults that really have a connection to God. They're not cultic. They're just in a sorry cult situation unknowingly for a moment. It doesn't mean they're going to stay there. So leave them alone. Pray for them and love them straight to heaven. You hear me? Body of Christ, we are so divided. We really need to stop with the debates and the judgment and the intolerance. And we really need to stop that. We really do. Do you know how much we could accomplish in the spirit realm if Catholics and Episcopalians, Baptists, Church of God, Church of God in Christ, Foursquare, come on now. Baptists, all of us would get, I'm not even naming half of them, that's how many there are. What we could accomplish in the spirit realm and in this world, if we laid the opinions aside and got with the main ingredients, the main things we need to be about, the anointing, the ushering in of God's presence because of our love for one another, oh my goodness, can you imagine if we could truly love each other, truly love each other with the love of God, not with the love of man's opinion, not I love you if you agree with me. The love of God, the agape love of God that reconciles us to each other in peace, in harmony, on one accord. You, we have to be on one accord to expect Pentecost. That's what happened in the upper room. They were on one accord in the book of Acts. And the presence of God, the Pentecostal experience of God, the Holy Spirit came down and lighted on them like a flame, a torch. How many of us have never had that experience? How many of you have never experienced the presence of God, let alone a touch or a manifestation of God in your presence? Imagine a corporate anointing in the church of the living God under the auspice of Jesus Christ, in the power of the Holy Ghost. Think about it. Pray about it. Work at it.